people who like the reverb, which is German for le reverb, which is French for the reverb. We're looking at the Ventris dual engine mega shark processor something reverb from Le Source Audio. Um, and in the uh, in honor of the dual engine, we're going with cats, but Dual cat. See? See? <laughs> I have the sweater for the occasion. Um, and yes, I need psychological help. I have to turn this camera on so that it moves around and abound, ab about. So, we have a shit ton of stuff to cover. There are 12 algorithms, which means 12 different kinds of math to be done with the reverbs. And then there's extra ones in the editor. And yes, we have to look at the editor. We shall, will not. We shall not. We will not. Look at the mobile app. There is a neuro... No, neuro no, no, no. There is a neuro app. It's neuro is their editor for all their pedals. Um, for the phone, you load it on your phone and you hook it up with a cable to the second input um, on the side and then you can control pretty much everything with uh, a phone or a tablet. Uh, we're not doing that because otherwise the video is seven hours long. So let's look at the features. I have a little cheat sheet here which comes with the pedal. Also the pedal comes with the power supply. Um, switch to the side. Robin. By the way, Robin up there in the Switch Bitch booth, Leslie is sick and Robin came over because he wanted to learn the Switcher anyway for reasons that will become apparent um, is it later or already. So we have stereo inputs, MIDI in on the other side, which you can't see, stereo out, which we're using in MIDI out. On the very top, there's a, I actually can't tell you what there is. There's a control input for the special Neuro Hub control thing that controls all their stuff. And um, a expression switch or switchable to a switch switch input and a USB and power. Um, that means that you can uh, hook up a switch to it to switch certain switchy functions or just expression. 
The pedal has a rather small footprint. As you can see, that's my hand. That's the pedal right there. That's about, let me show you a normal pedal. Um, here, that's a boss type pedal, but it's not boss. So it's not huge at all. And that's what she never said. Um, knobby wise, we have time. Looks like it's a delay, but it's not. So that's reverb time or decay. We have a pre-delay. How long does it take for the reverb to come back from the wall? So I go, uh, and then the uh goes back there, hits the wall and comes back. And that time takes some time. That, that takes some time to come back. That is the pre-delay before the reverb hits you. Um, this is how long it then decays. We have a treble knob. Control 1 and Control 2 and a mix. Now, what Control 1 and Control 2 do is on this sheet, which you have to learn by heart or just wing it. Um, then there's um, what happens when you tap the option, it says here, and what happens when you hold the option. So you could swell up the reverb or oscillate the reverb, usually just reverb hold. A pitch ramp down, delay hold, certain things that it does. Um, you can control modulation rates, tremolo rates, pre-delay time. I don't know why you would want that, but you might want that. Now, there are presets here, which you can step through with the little preset button. Um, apparently, there's a way, there's some, some setup, don't ask me how, I'm not going to figure this out, to, do, to have twice as many. So instead of four, you have eight which is four times two, I do math, just like the Ventress, just the Ventress is a lot better at it. Um, and you, of course, can also do that with my die, which is on the sides. It's MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's an 8-bit protocol, technically 7-bit. The first one is a status bit or byte. I don't know. I learned this at some point. We have 12 algorithms, as I already mentioned, which are on the front panel, selectable with the selector knob. That's why it's called a selector knob. Um, the awesome bit is the A, A plus B and B switch, which technically means each of those presets can have two reverbs hidden within. There's an A reverb and a B reverb and A and B at the same time. They can be in parallel, meaning your guitar goes into reverb A, reverb A goes into the internal mixer. And guitar goes into reverb B, which then goes into the internal mixer and gets mixed together. Or you can cascade them. Reverb A goes into reverb B and gets reverberated itself, which can lead to sounds. Um, you can also have reverb A, turn it off and spill over into reverb B. So that means the tail beautifully st stays there while the new reverb already starts working, which is why you have two completely independent um, engines. How to show that? I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> well, if I'm on A and B, that obviously doesn't work. works from one to two. I guess I have to do more presets. But it does work and that is beautiful. So you're not cutting off your reverb when you go to the next preset. As long as those presets are uh, A or B, not A and B, because then it's actually using both engines. Can you follow me? I, I lost the trail quite a while ago. You want to know what the setup I have. My setup is a little bit complicated because I want to show you the Ventus Dual Reverb from Source Audio in all its stereo glory, which means this <laughs> McMull T Classic is going into the Rev Dynamis 740 on the Clean Channel. The send from the effects loop is going into the Ventress. The stereo out from the Ventress is going into my Torpedo Studio, which some kind of room camera can show over there. Right there, Torpedo Studio. And we're attempting some serious 
switching magic here. Wait till the editor comes in. And Robin is doing that for the very first time. So he's doing a pretty phenomenal job handling seven or eight cameras and a laptop and a shit ton of stuff. So thank you, Robin. This is a, this is a high stress situation that he's in. Because he's not going to get any more coffee if he fucks up. So, um, we've looked at what it is now. Also, oh, it's going into the Torpedo Studio, which is on line input. And in the Torpedo Studio, we're uh, simulating the Power Amp 6L6s going into two, in this case, uh, Vox type uh, 212s. So that sounds like this. <laughs> That's what it is. So we're going to go through the um, algorithms, relatively simple, and tweak it a bit. And we're going to start at room, and I'm turning it on. That's my tail. There you go. I wish I could play. So that's pretty neat. Let's see, pretty late. See, no reverb, and then it comes in really late, and then the reverb comes. Which, even for a room, could be very interesting sound. That's pretty cool. So we have treble, let's check this out. Reverb's pretty dull. Reverb's too bright! Pretty neat for room. So, um, control one does bass. Apparently. And control two does modulation depth. And this does modulation rate when you tap it. Still on room, people. Frickin' le insane. Uh, and then we have mix, of course. Up to only reverb. So that's that. Moving on to Hall, uh, where we have treble bass, Hall size, set pre-delay time, so... So that's uh, that actually could be interesting to tap. You can smallerize that a bit.
And uh, then let's try the uh, reverb hold function. It's a very pleasant sound. But this is where you want to be for what I just did. Uh, the E dome, we have bass modulation depth mod modulation rate. So we're gonna go, we're gonna right go with the slow modulation rate, uh, modulation depth. Dome is, I don't know what that means, but it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful algorithm. Uh, True Spring. A little bit less of everything. And we have a, a spring length. Attempt this again with a little bit of ah, and again. I played this the other day beautifully. Trust me, I did. I think I'll leave that compressor on. That's nice. One play mini ego compressor, people. That is a nice spring. Um, I love the plate. Where well, we have base plate size right here. Uh, Pre-delay time, tap.
Now we're going to get into the more creative stuff. And for me, uh, an amazing reverb that just one makes you want to go further is a creative reverb. Now the big boss RV500, I think it's called, has killer sound and some creativity in it, but it doesn't flash me as much as the big sky. So for me, the big sky uh, used to be still the creative reverb with its formant and tremolo and all these special reverb sounds. Now, the Ventress doesn't have the ones that the Big Sky has, but it has different ones and none less creative. So which ones you like? Pfft. It is for me right now the only contender, the only absolute, the only actual real competitor to the Big Sky, whereas the Big Sky has an older process and only one engine, but still in terms of creativity, neck and neck. So here we are now in lo-fi mode where we have distortion on this knob. So nothing. But it's only your reverb that's being distorted and that is awesome. And this, uh, when I hold the uh, option in, it's supposed to oscillate. So I really think this is a very cool mode. Now mod verb, uh, I think it's more of a trem verb, but they're modulating uh, the amplitude. So yeah, it's mod verb, but for me mod verb is more of a chorus verb, whereas what they're doing is... And so here we have the type and the depth. So here. The more you dial it in, the more depth. That's the rate. Now we change the waveform. And stereo madness. Pretty damn awesome. Shimmer. Now basic setting is an octave and you can't really switch that here as far as I can see. No, but of course you can uh, set that up any kind of interval in the Neuro app, which we're going to look at soon. So this is the Shimmer Crossfade.
And Shimmer can sound bad. Shimmer can sound too artificial. When that pitch just isn't right, Shimmer doesn't work. Neunabe Immerse does a great Shimmer. Big Sky does a great Shimmer. And the Ventress does a great Shimmer. <laughs> Okay, people, that sound alone worth the price of admission. Um, Echo Verb is pretty cool because that actually has a delay built in, whereas this is the delay feedback, this is the crossfade, and that's the tempo. Where's the delay volume? This could be awesome. Don't play like this. Um, swell. Wow, that just swell. How many people didn't make that joke? Probably I'm not the only one. Envelope gain, swell time. I have a swell time. Oh my god, I can stop. So it's gate, of course. There's a gated kind of envelope thing. Envelope gain, swell time. Here we go. always have to let go otherwise the envelopes already open can be nice this right here is my favorite which I use extensively in the opening track I don't know what it does, but whatever the fuck it does, it's awesome.
it's kind of instant U2. Pretty freaking ham awesome. And then we have reverse. Forever needs backwards reverb. So, with what is on the front panel, it's pretty damn amazing. Let's go into the dual engines. Uh, make it big for a second, Robin. So let's say. No, she didn't say it. Well, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what your girlfriend says. So um, right now I'm on A. Okay, so I'm gonna set up. The offspring on A. And I'm gonna set that up without the original guitar, so pretty much like this. I'm going to switch to B and I'm just going to do the E dome. Now oh, that's neat. Now I'm going to go to A and B. Now I have them in parallel and you can see on the lights that both of them are low on. Now here, all of a sudden, I have my mix for my dry guitar. Reverb A, Reverb B. So let's test this. And you can literally build anything you want. Can go back to B, make this lo fi, distort the shit out of it. Now, those combination possibilities are completely freaking ridiculous. And of course, I can go to this and hold this in and save it. So now technically here I've got something else. Doesn't trail right now. Well, let's look at the editor and see if we can turn that on. 
For which Robin will have to go throw the paddle away. Oh, if he now changed the background to the side. Yeah, well, there you go. Pretty, pretty, pretty nifty what Robin just did there. Um, so here's the editor. And if I go to settings, I go reverb trail mode. And technically, let's see. There you go. So that's still, that's red, which I think now shows you that it's in trails mode. Pretty neat. So if I turn that off, the red light disappears. So red shows you that it's in trails mode. Um, there's a kill dry mode. Oh, I have to turn it on. Why didn't that work? I don't have to understand it, but let's assume it does because it worked before. Uh, what does the foot switch do? You can say uh, it goes uh, up through the presets. Um, you can set that up. But the most important thing, let's look at the main settings here. So throw that all the way on the screen. Thank you. So right now, dual single mode, it's in single reverb A, single reverb B, dual parallel or cascade. So right now, if I, uh, I can... See, I'm switching on the switch on the pedal and it's realizing where I am. So the USB connected software works beautifully. Um, input output routing, it says it does whatever I actually um, have plugged in. Right now it should be mono in, stereo out. Uh, stereo in, wet sum to mono, mono in, mono out, dry out too. You can do a shit ton of stuff, anything literally that your rig wants. So here you have quite a few more controls than on the front panel. And you also have two more algorithms. So here's an outboard spring, which is apparently is a very, very good represent, uh, a replication of an um, outboard fender spring or something. So let's see, see the knobs react. specific controls. There's a drive knob. Where did my reverb go? What happened? Now my reverb's completely gone. We can try this again. It's saying it's hall, but it's not. Outboard spring. Here we go. Yeah, this is the beta version of the software. The engine specific drive knob turns the reverb off. So let's assume that will work at some point in time. Metal box. Go back to Metalbox and see if that does something. No. So those must not work yet. Because that works. Okay. Um, go down a bit, Robin. He can assign what the knobs do. Control knob one does pre-delay feedback, but you can put any parameter you want on 
knob one, knob two, the option tap and the option hold. Pre-delay build. Well, let's try that. Very nice. Now, if I switch to engine B, engine B turns on. Let's see what the metal box does here. Still doesn't work. So let's go to E Dome. Whoa. Those are different. Whoa. Ah, the, I, don't, I don't understand what all this is. That's a shit ton of stuff. And you can clearly do a million things here. Reverb level, early reflections, modulation rate. We want that up. Where's modulation? horrible sounds if you wanted to. So further down we have dual mode controls uh, which of course in AB mode it is uh, you know the levels of the different reverbs and the dry. Dual mode option tap. Do engine B function, do engine A function. Ah okay you can, you can say what the option hold and tap does in dual mode. You can define everything. Look at this crap. This is amazing. So, um, here are MIDI, you know, external MIDI control stuff. Yeah, this, uh, this allows you to completely tailor the reverb to whatever you want. Throw that off the screen, please. Yep. Whoa! Um, Robin, take your stick in your hand and make this smaller and just show that on the right side. See, now make a big show on the right side that there's tons of presets that we can go into. We can save, import, share. And uh, at the bottom there, there are a few. Ah, they're the defaults for... So if I double-click that... How do I turn tra tails off? Trails off. Go away. Thank you. So, I think we covered about good 60% of what this thing can do. We didn't go into MIDI, didn't go into a neuro control where you can control this and other source audio devices with something like. The Neuro Hub, uh, which is connected with these proprietary little cables, USB to your computer, and on in the computer instead of just seeing the um, Ventris or uh, the I want to say Nemesis, but that's not the word. It is the word. Why did it sound wrong? The Nemesis delay. Um, or any of the other source audio pedals, you can connect them 
and guide them all and program them all with one USB cable and pretty much have an amazing multi-effect, which then is also MIDI controllable and switchable. Pretty insane technology for those who really want to go all the freaking way. So... My two cents. I love the damn thing. Let's talk form factor. This this means make it big, Robin. This, this is me making weird... Yeah, see? <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> Go away! Um, it is considerably smaller than the Big Sky. Big Sky also has big in the name. And it is... It has been one of the go-to reverbs if you want... You know, the full Monty. Um, I think Ventress has different sounds. The dual engine capability, the stereo, do this on the left, this on the right, um, wet, mono, dry, all these possibilities make this a more powerful box. Big Sky still has some stuff to offer that the Ventress can't do, yet the Ventress has stuff to offer that the Big Sky doesn't do, like the Offspring. Um... Like the lo-fi. So, like the e-dorm, which is pretty cool. And then the Big Sky has stuff that this doesn't have. Like the cloud, which could be e uh, Or the formant, which is pretty cool. Like the coral kind of a thing. So, yeah. Overall, they're different boxes. But finally, there's something on the market that can, uh, can be a real alternative to the Big Sky. The dual engine function with A and AB... And B is killer because it can really just create your own combination of two reverse, which I thought was completely a gimmick and who the fuck needs that. But it's cool. It's awesome. Price point is, I actually don't know. It's not too cheap. It's, uh, it's worth it, though. If you want... One of the, I call them Emperor Reverbs. For me, the Boss RV500, I think it's called, is not it. It does a lot of stuff, but it's not inspiring. Big Sky has always inspired me. This does the same thing. You play it and you immediately have parts in your head. You want to just play songs and create songs with this thing. Um, the editor is easy to understand and gives you more options. Um, combined with other... Gadgets from Source Audio, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, and obviously, um, extens- uh, 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 expression input control, all that stuff. Can't find a fault with it, and I looked. So, Source Audio Ventures Dual Reverb, thumbs up from me and the cats. Thank you, Robin. This was a very complicated video to edit. And uh, links to shirts and mugs and anything HP related below at Teespring. We're going to do some special stuff once in a while in terms of live stream stuff on Patreon. So if you want to be part of that, support me on Patreon. And support me on Patreon anyway because it would be nice because that's how I do these videos. Uh, also how I do these videos and how I feed the dogs. And animals at the end, thank you, Source Audio. Bye-bye.